Well, how are you doing? And hello from uh, Colombia. It's a lovely September afternoon and I thought I'd park up in a relatively scenic spot. Got some coffee trees in the background there, as you might expect from Colombia, because I wanted to talk about something uh, this the gear shifter sister. Uh, I've spoken about it very briefly in videos in the past where I've just said buy a cover for your gear shifter sister and I've never gone into detail about what it is uh, but I'm going to do that today. Now uh, fair warning uh, for people who perhaps have a bike similar to this this is the uh, BMW GS 750 40th anniversary edition from 2021 trips off the tongue um, so if you've already got a gear shifter sister you're probably going to find this video a little bit boring so give me a thumbs up and uh, move on to something more interesting uh, the thumbs up being for the fair warning so that you don't give me a thumbs down in a few minutes and go okay I sat through all of that and I already know it so I think this video is more aimed at people uh, that are perhaps thinking of buying a bike not necessarily a BMW uh, that has the gear shifter sister or read about it in some kind of brochure that it's available as an option optional extra or even a standard and you're like well what the hell is that is that an automatic does that mean it's automatic is it semi-automatic uh, do I have to use the clutch what goes on so that's what I'm going to explain just kind of quickly uh, I'll get to the point as quick as I can and then I'll go for a ride and then I'll show you uh, you know what it does and why so there it is now on mine I've put a, uh, a protection bracket which I bought separately BMW doesn't include it uh, with the bike when you buy it new and I don't know why um, because it's a fairly uh, delicate piece of equipment and I imagine fairly expensive if you drop the bike and hit a rock and uh, you know you've got to replace it I wouldn't imagine it's um, it's that cheap um, so I was surprised it didn't have a cov cover I, I, I thought when I had it as new I thought well that delicate piece of smart equipment looks really exposed and the way I look after bikes and ride that's probably going to last about a week so uh, I quickly bought one of these covers there and attached it very simple piece of black covering and that protects that as good as it's going to get right so let's talk about what it is why it is and should you uh, do you do you want one do you need one the the, uh, the gear shift assist is basically replacing the use of the clutch so it's not automatic you don't get to a certain amount of revs and it flips up or down uh, into the next gear uh, you still have full control uh, of the uh, of the gears itself and with the use of the gear shifter um, you can just flip that up or down when you're ready without the use of the clutch um, historically uh, using the clutch uh, not using the clutch or having this gear shift assist was for uh, you know racing bikes basically just to get that uh, thousandth of a second advantage I suppose uh, and I guess uh, you know not have to faff around going up and down the gears because uh, you know they go up and down the gears quite a lot if you know anything about motorcycle racing uh, you know particularly going in and out of corners so it's less of a faff about if it's uh, if it's assisted without the clutch so um, you know adventure bike manufacturers such as BMW there's others as well uh, decided it might be a cool feature for uh, you know lazy people like us to have that uh, additional advantage so that we've got you know our left hand free to wave at people or scratch at our balls or whatever we want to do but you don't have to now use the clutch except for when you're starting off in first gear, uh, selecting first gear, you have to engage the clutch to go into first gear. And then once you pull away, release the clutch in the normal way and start going up the gears, you, uh, you don't have to use the clutch anymore. But then when you arrive at a junction or traffic lights, you go down into first, uh, you, need to, uh, you need to engage the clutch once again to keep the engine running, uh, everything else in between. So why do that? Why have it? What's the advantage and what's my experience of it? I quite like it. And to be honest, this is the first time I've had one. I've had many bikes, but it's the first time I had the gear shift assist and uh, I've got used to it. I love it. Uh, it's great. It's, uh, as I said, ideal for lazy people. Um, and uh, the advantages, I suppose, yeah going in and out of corners uh, quickly going up and down the gears it's very smooth obviously it's all done electronically as soon as you 
uh, select a gear, you know, in a millionth of a second, there's some sort of electronic disengagement and re-engagement going on in that nanosecond to get you into the next gear without having to use the clutch in the standard way. So that's pretty awesome in itself, isn't it? Why not have that advantage? And also, you don't have to, I'm still going up and down here, my knees, you don't have to, let me give you another view while I continue to waffle. You don't have to uh, drop the throttle uh, in between gears. You do in a normal uh, clutch. You, you have to take the revs off, uh, engage the clutch, select a gear, and then re-engage the clutch as the, uh, I'm not gonna get into the technical aspects of it, and I don't suppose anyone is really interested, but uh, you know, re-engaging the gear, so all that goes on in about half a second normally. Uh, but you don't, and then open up the throttle again in your new gear, whether you've gone up or down. Uh, you don't have to do that with the gear shift assist, which is fairly awesome. Takes a little bit to get used to, um, just, well, not that long, but you know, you, you, you're opening up the revs pretty hard. You've, you've hit four and a half thousand, five thousand revs. You want to go up then into, uh, you know, third or fourth or whatever gear you're in. The natural instinct is to, is to, is to close the throttle, uh, you know, as you're changing gear. So you soon get used to not having to do that. And that's pretty awesome. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's probably the main advantage. So that's it really. Uh, I'm not gonna drone on too much longer, I don't think, uh, about what it is and why. Uh, I'll perhaps think of something else to say as I'm riding along and, uh, you know, I'll talk about that then. But I'll just quickly go up and down and through the gears. Um, just so that you can look at it, so you can have a listen. Big lorry going past, sorry about that. Um, and then, you know, hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have an idea of what it is, uh, assuming that you didn't already, because that's why you're still here. Uh, and uh, at the end of it, you'll go, oh, that's so great, I'm gonna give you a thumbs up. And I might even subscribe, because uh, uh, I do a lot of other kind of videos. Every now and then I'll think of something like this. I'm not, uh, I'm not a technician or a mechanic or an engineer in any way. I don't go through every little thing, uh, but now and then I think of stuff and I go, oh, I'll share that. That might be interesting to three or four people. Uh, so here it is. Right, I'm going to get on the bike and uh, <laughs> you're probably screaming for me to do that. And uh, I'll take you through the gears then and show you the gear shift assist. And just before I set off, let me throw in a bonus top tip. You might have noticed there in the first part of the video, uh, my stand is on a big old stone. Whenever you're on a road like this, um, try and identify a stone such as that to uh, line up your stand with. Top tip for today. There you go. I've really earned my thumbs up. So far, so good, hey? And now second gear. How's that? Third. Fourth. Right, I wouldn't suggest going fourth at this speed, but just giving you a quick snapshot there of what's to come in the proper road environment. So here we are, I'm pulling away, let's say from a traffic light, and off I go. Second gear. Third gear. Fourth. And if you've got a fifth and a sixth, there you go. Okay, let me just go back up into six. I would normally go around a corner like this ahead in third or fourth. So as the vehicle's slowing, my revs are actually off. I'm knocking it down without using the clutch and I'm in third. And then I'm ready to anticipate this line of traffic. Do I want to overtake or am I going to be sitting at this speed for a while? I'm probably going to overtake after that white car. So, opening up the throttle. Jumping up into fourth now. Jumping up into fifth now. And going up into sixth now. And all that without the clutch. And it happens nice and smoothly when... Um, you are accelerating. Now, let me show you something else. If you're not accelerating, so let me go down a few gears. Okay, so let's say I'm in second, doing some sort of town driving, and I'm just going at this speed, and then I decide to go into third without altering the speed. Here I go. 
it didn't go up see it flashed on and off same speed holding the same revs I'm trying to go up into third and it's basically saying I, my computer brain can't manage that for some reason could you slowly climb up the revs so I can engage easier so I'm going up the revs faster and faster holding the accelerator on faster and faster and then third goes up then uh, without any problems so that's worthy of note so the only time it's not uh, comfortable to use is when you're sitting at the same speed and that's probably about all you need to know <laughs> so let's uh, let's let's uh, ride to a stop so I'm not using the clutch as you can probably see I was making it obvious a minute ago by taking my hand clean off uh, so yeah just to make that obvious so revs off down into third down into second and I'll pull in over here uh, just simulate that I need to stop for some sort of emergency so I'm braking I'm braking I've indicated now I'm coming to a stop I'm gonna need this clutch there we go and then I'll come to a full stop now I can go down into first I've still got the clutch in and I'm now going back using the clutch in the normal way now accelerating away from first smoothly into second smoothly into third and smoothly into fourth all the time with the revs climbing and all the time with the uh, accelerator open so that's the very useful and comfortable thing that I was mentioning in the first part of the video as to why this is possibly uh, its most advantageous it's just that ability to keep the throttle opening open while going up the gears I quite like it all right let's pack on some speed down the gear down the gear down the gear and into second okay picking up the revs third still picking up the revs throttle still open fourth close the throttle down into third throttle still closed down into second I don't need to be in second for that particular corner but I'm just really uh, <laughs> exaggerating the point here uh, just to give you a real clear idea of what's going on with this uh, gear shift assist or rather down there and the fact that you don't have to use the clutch so in summary I really like it and um, I hope that was very useful for those of you that are perhaps thinking of getting a bike like this um, or have even got one on your bike and <laughs> wondered why you don't ever have to use the clutch I doubt that's the case but uh, there you go um, any questions about that I might have missed something out I usually do uh, yeah that's about it so thanks once again for watching especially if you got this far that's very good of you if that was all very useful to you thumbs up bit of a subscribe I'll try and keep uh, the content interesting useful and uh, I answer all questions as you probably know if you've ever asked me one in the past that's it I'm now gonna go thanks very much ciao for now